Hey, good morning, everybody. Again, I have the pleasure of being back with Mr. Ed Honey, Mayor of Marana. And today we're going to talk about something that's very, very serious and very, very important to all of us, and that's water. So good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Clint. I, I hope everybody's doing well. Yeah, yeah we're, and we're glad to have you with us. So jump right in. Water has been a big issue here in the desert forever. And uh, I know you got a lot of thoughts and a lot of experience on I, I've water. I've got a lot of involvement with water. I, I, I want to kind of break it into two segments. One is quantitative and one is qualitative. And it's kind of like quantity of water and quality of water and how, we're, how we break that down. If, if I could start out really big picture, 30,000 feet, uh, Arizona – gets 2.8 million acre feet of CAP water a year uh, out of the Colorado River. Uh, we're now in tier one, which has cut that down about uh, four, uh, 120,000 acre feet. And we're getting ready to go into 2A, which will cut it down another 80,000 acre feet. To explain CAP a little bit, of the 2.8 million acre feet that the uh, state gets, 1.2 stays in the river and it serves the uh, communities of Parker, Lake Havasu, Bullhead, and Arizona communities that are right on the river, whether it's for farming or, or treatment for potable or whatever. And 1.6 million goes into the CAP canal. Uh, that 1.6 million now is probably about 1.1 with it in tier 2A. Uh, the waters that have been lost so far are agricultural waters, mainly for our friends up in Pinal County, and I have many up there that farm. They've lost a lot of their CAP water. It has not had an effect on M&I water, municipal industrial type water as of yet. And it'll be quite a while and many cutbacks before it will affect those waters. So that's kind of where the CAP is right now for Arizona. We're kind of on the end of the CAP allotment. Uh, California and even Nevada have, have uh, priorities over us. And so a lot of the cuts end up happening in Arizona first. And we're negotiating right now, we being the state, to try to get California and Nevada to make some cutbacks as well, you know, because it, it would have a tremendously bad effect on us eventually. Then I want to talk a little bit about Tucson water. And I've had my issues with Tucson on other issues, but one thing I'll say about Tucson is their water portfolio is the best in the state. They thought ahead, they did things correctly, and they work to make sure that they would always have water in the community. Uh, Tucson gets about 145,000 acre feet of CAP water a year. And they recharge it out in the Aber Valley in the recharge basins. They only use about 103,000 acre feet. And that would be serving the city of Tucson most of urbanized Pima County, and about half of Marana as well. Uh, Dub Mountain and uh, Continental Ranch are served by Tucson Water. Uh, so they're able to recharge 145,000 acre feet of CAP and only use 103,000 acre feet. Uh, that's not all the water they recharge either. They also recharge about 25,000 acre feet of uh, effluent. So if you look at that in perspective, Tucson is recharging about 50% more water than they use. And that's why the water tables in our region have been going up. That's the and thing that shocked me when, when I was first like turned on and when we were talking about this earlier in the year. Our water levels are up well, over the not, last it, decade. It's not just Marana. It's it's the, I mean, that's the Pima and the County Valley as a whole. and the entire service area in here in our valley. We're all in the same aquifer, the Tucson AMA. And uh, 
you, you take all of that CAP that's being recharged by the city, it, that's bringing the water table up out in the Abra Valley, and then you take the water coming out of the Ida Road treatment plant, which is about 90% of the water usage in the valley. It's treated to drinking water quality and then discharged into the Santa Cruz River. So the water table in northern Marana right now is at about 130 or 40 feet. To put that in, in perspective again, uh, when my parents started their water company there, and I'll get, get more, into more detail on that in a little bit, but uh, they were pumping from almost 300 acre feet, or, or feet down. So our water table is going up. We're still farming out there. Housing is is uh, coming in, and uh, we're getting we're one of the fastest growing communities in southern Arizona. Yet we're using less water. So you say, well, Ed, how 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 does that happen? An acre of cotton uses about four and a half acre feet of water a year to grow a crop. Four houses on an acre uses one and a half acre feet of water. So a third. A third. And my, my standing joke is uh, we're building houses in Marana because we're environmentalists <laughs> and we're trying to save the water. <laughs> and you put that in a big perspective. Well, people say, well, there's eight houses to the acre in most of these communities. You take a 100-acre piece, you have an R4 on it, so you can have 400 houses. You may build those 400 houses on 40 or 45 acres. Right. And the rest of the land stays open space, roads, drainage, parks, open space, setbacks, whatever you're going to use. But in reality, building houses saves water. Saves water. That was the thing that shocked me the most when I was hearing that. I'd never thought about it. And but and I don't think anybody's suggesting that we just take every piece of ground and cut that out. No. And in Marana we're limited and, and by geographic. Happening and, and another thing, I'll I'll use Tucson water. Uh, like I said, I, I kick them around a little bit once in a while mm -hmm. when I don't agree, but I do agree with some of the things. Thirty years ago, the Tucson water system was using 100,000 acre feet. Today, almost twice as big. I mean, counting Marana right, and right. Laurel Valley yeah. and Sarita and the city. We're and using 110? You know, using about 100,000 or something. So same amount. But they're We're, using the same amount of water today and we've doubled in size. Well, that's crazy. How did that happen? It's zero scape landscaping. Yeah. Uh, old Tucson and old Marana neighborhoods, you had grass in the front yard and you had fancy trees and everything. Now you have zero scape landscaping. Uh -huh. You have uh, gravel or rocks, colored rock. You have uh, uh, palm trees or you have cacti or you have uh, mesquites or Palo Verde trees. And you don't have to water that stuff right. because just there's enough rain to keep those right. trees and shrubs flourishing year round without watering them. If you get into the housing, low flow toilets, low flow showers, low flow washing machines, low flow faucets, you're using a half or a third of the water in a shower that you would before getting the same, same use out of it, but they've figured out different ways to do it. And so there's, there's really creative ways to have the same quality of life and use much less water. I want to recap what you just said. 30 years ago versus today, twice the population in that 30-year time frame in Pima County as a whole, and we're using exactly basically the same amount of water as we were with half the population 30 years ago. That's, that's, that's correct. correct. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm using figures. It might be 40% right, round, bigger or right, whatever, rounded, but much right. larger. Yeah. I mean, there was no Oral Valley, Sarita, Moran, or Arreo right. Not back, 30 back years then. Ago, yeah. And uh, much, much, much smaller community. But we're becoming so much more efficient with water. 
and we do it correctly. And that includes Marana as well and how we do things with water. And, uh, you know, Marana uh, built a new wastewater plant a few years ago. A hundred percent of the water that comes out of that plant doesn't go in the Santa Cruz River to run up into Pinal County. It's put into a lake situation right there at the plant. And what we're going to do with that lake situation is make it a park. And you'll put that treated water. And as I mentioned, that water is drinking water quality right. after it gets through the plant. And uh, you put that in the, in the recharge basin. But I call it a lake. It's a pond, really. But I mean, right. you build trails around it, put some picnic tables out there. You have the ducks and the birds come <laughs> and, and, and land in your pond. And it's a place for take children, even school children, you know, for uh, school trips or whatever to see the birds or to see the plants and stuff. And we recharge all of that water. The general rule of thumb for uh, uh, water usage is for every 100 gallons of water that goes through your meter at your house, about 60% of that water makes it to the wastewater plant. 60%. 60%. So, I mean, you get some evaporation. There are still people, you know, washing their car or or a little bit of grass in the backyard or or whatever. But 60% makes it back to the plant, gets treated to drinking water quality. Actually, the water coming out of the end of the plant may be of a higher quality than the water you're pumping out of the ground. And you recharge that water then you reuse it and you keep, you know, you continually reuse the water. So it, it, it sets us up to where we, we just use less water. So in, in, in discussing this again over the last few months, in my case, 30, 40, 50 years, now, your whole life since your parents created the first water company right. in Marana. But a lot of the stuff that, we're dealing with now as far as water even goes back further than that is that not correct uh, i've heard people talk about at the beginning of the state of arizona the the the, the natural resources that we have as well as some of the uh, arrangements that were made early in the the statehood of arizona kind of put us in that position is is there you actually want to the state that? has probably the best water policy of all the states in the southwest Long term as well. Long term water policies. And state law now requires all cities and towns that are pumping potable water, which is virtually all of us. For every gallon you pump, you have to recharge a gallon. And there are different ways to do that. Uh, We recharge about 800 acre feet out of our wastewater plant now. Well, we recharge that in the ground. We get a a certain amount of credit for that. Uh, we buy CAP allotment, and we uh, partner with our friends at the city of Tucson to recharge our portion of that allotment. And that's how we get the water credits to pump the wet water. When people say, oh, we're running out of water, it's, it's a horrible problem. No, we're not. No, we're not. We have more wet water in Marana, Aver Valley, Tucson than anybody else in the state. We just really have a good water system here. And the water tables are going up and we're maintaining our water tables. And uh, we're not running out of water, the product, the actual wet water right. product. What a Places like Marana come short on is the water credits that allow you to pump the water. I mentioned before, right? Every gallon you pump, you got to put a gallon back. Well, you put a certain amount of that water back with effluent. You put a certain amount back with buying CAP allotment water and bringing it in and recharging it. And right now, we're in pretty good shape with that. 
And if somebody starts telling people you're going to run out of water, you're not going to be able to flush your toilet or take a shower or, or whatever, they're not telling you the truth. Misinformed. And I'm not saying these people are lying. I, that's not my nature. Yeah. But I said a lot of times these people don't have the information. Uh, I'll give you an example of another uh, story. A lot of people will come in and say, hey, Miranda's running out of water. Late beads down 150 feet. Right. From optimum level. That is true. Lake Mead is down 150 feet. And yes, they are cutting water CAP allotments back to our state and everybody else. You're still never going to run out of water. If we never got another drip of CAP water in Arizona, Marana, Tucson, Oro Valley, and Cerrito will have water for the next 100 years yeah. easily. So it's a misconception to say we're running out of water. We may be running out of the credits to use that water for expansion. Right. But if you live here now, your grandkids will be drinking water here. It's, it's just not an issue. And you shouldn't scare people by saying we're going to run out of water because we're not. Because there's been a lot of that. Yes, there there's has. There's been a lot of that here lately. And I rack it up to people being uninformed. And you can see the mead, like mead is dropping. You can see it. I mean, it's right. visible. That makes headlines. But most people are not taking the time to dig into right. the backstory of the minutia. M&I, and, and like I said, municipal industrial water are going to be the last water things that are going to be cut off from the CAP canal for that proportional amount that Arizona gets. They're the last things to be cut. And if they cut our CAP water in half, the Tucson Miranda region will still be bringing in more water than we're using. Wouldn't not wouldn't wouldn't be any noticeable. So you to wouldn't anybody. notice the difference. That doesn't mean we don't need to be responsible. Oh no, absolutely. And we don't do zero scaping, and we're going to a lot of places with turf instead of grass. Right. And we're putting in native trees in our parks right. and stuff that don't require heavy watering. And consideration of different businesses that might want to relocate here that <laughs> require more water, that maybe some require less water. Talk to us a little bit, Ed. I know that um, there's we have water in other places, our credits for water. Like I've heard mentioned in Quartzsite and water we have water in other places that we can draw well, on. Well, the can you touch on that? Valley up there has a lot of water and no people. Mm -hmm. And they had talked about in the state of Arizona pumping some of that water and even putting it in the CAP canal and sending it into areas that either have farming or, or have folks living there. Uh, there are some water tables there. That would be quite expensive. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're drilling big, huge wells. You got 20 or 30 miles at minimum to get to the CAP. You've got to pump the water there, and uh, it becomes an issue. But there, there are other places. I think conservation is one of the uh, big things. Uh, I'll tell you one thing we've talked about in Marana, and you may think this is kind of funny. We were at an event Actually, it was a political event, and we were in the Dell Webb community in uh, Dell Mountain. <clears throat> and a gentleman was there, and he was talking about something they had done in San Francisco that used to be a beautiful community. Uh, he said they went around with a, a, a program, and they replaced everybody's toilets for free. In other words, older neighborhoods uh -huh. that had big toilets that used three or four or five right. gallons to flush a toilet. And say you have two or three toilets per house. And they go in for free and replace your toilet with a, uh, the new toilets. The airflow toilets now use 1.2 gallons. So again, a third the water a third, again. Yeah. What happened in those communities is the people were thrilled. First of all, they got a new uh, toilet. Mm-hmm or two or three, depending on what mm -hmm. they had in their house, at no cost to them. Secondarily, their water bill went down. 
Because one of the biggest water users in a house with two or three kids, a mom and dad, exactly. is that toilet. Absolutely. So people all of a sudden, instead of paying a 50 or $60 water bill, we're paying $40. Yeah. It's like, man, my yeah. water bill went down. And they're saving water. So, I mean, a lot of it's being smart. Yeah, being proactive. Now, we, we have not put that program into effect yet, but we, we're, we're talking about maybe trying to do something like that yeah. and create ways to have the same quality of life but use less of this very valuable product. You know, this is um, because we do live in the desert and it is dry and we don't get a lot of rain. And water always, especially when you got agriculture or farming or right. raising livestock, has always been an issue throughout mankind's history. And to see now where we're at in the 21st century and how we approach stuff, and that people like yourself, and, and I know several other people, I've had the good fortune over the last two or three months to talk to state, county, federal people that are involved in water. And to see that much time, effort, and the resources spent to, to protect our water and to know that our here at, locally, our levels are going up, even though we have an increase in population, uh, in, in the case of P Pima County, double Mm -hmm. of 30 years ago is really encouraging to the layperson to know that our leadership has taken a real proactive approach to protecting our water yeah uh, uh, I, I i admire and respect all of you absolutely that. and that's why i say a lot of the uh, folks that don't want more growth use water as a tool right to say you shouldn't move here and what i'm telling you is that if we the, most of the housing in Miranda is built in the farming areas right. now. I have a big housing project going in behind my right. house. Mm -hmm. They're going to use a third yeah. of the water yeah. that the farming was using. Yeah. And we need to invite people to our community. We want people to come here. Absolutely. We're a friendly group of people. They're moving here for a reason. Right. They're moving out of places where it's too expensive right. to live, maybe in California right. or Illinois or Washington yeah. State. And they're moving into this community to where they could live as good or better lifestyle for, you know, two thirds the cost. A fraction of the cost, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a great thing. You know, I said I was going to talk a little quantitative, but a little qualitative yeah. as well. So let's go the there. The quality aspect of water. Uh, you've probably seen or heard or on the news about the perfluorinated compounds and the 1,4 dioxins in the water. And a couple of our water systems in Marana were a little higher than we wanted them to be. One was Saguaro Bloom and one was Continental Reserve Areas. We went in and put water treatment facilities in both of those large areas. Right at an expense of $16 million to the town of Marana. Why would we do that? Because the reason we're here is to serve our people. Right. You know, it's not just police and roads. Right. It's, it's uh, potable water needs to be safe for you and your children and, and to drink or to use and everything. Those systems cost a lot of money. Now the water in those neighborhoods is purer than anywhere else in the entire valley yeah. because they have those treatment plants on there. But you say, well, why were they so expensive? I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of how those plants work. 1,4-dioxin and perfluorinated PFOAs and PFOSs, which are used in shampoo, dish soap, right. uh, Teflon pans, and everything else, they quit using it now, but they, they used it because it's an oil. Uh, it repels oils. And uh, to, to make the water safe, like in our treatment plants, I'll use Swirl Bloom for an example. I've toured that plant a couple of times. You have to break the 1,4 dioxin down. You know how you do that? You add hydrogen peroxide to the water. What that does is it breaks up the 1,4-dioxin molecule into an inert compound that is harmless to everybody. 
So after you break that down, you still have to take the hydrogen peroxide out of the water. So you had to add something to the water to clear up an issue you had with the water. And then you've got to take that substance out of the water as, as well. Our water treatment plants, first they add the peroxide, break the 1,4-dioxin down. Then it goes through a slow sand filtration system to get all the bacteria and stuff of the perfluorinated uh, compounds, uh-huh. PFOAs, PFOSs, and the 1,4-dioxin. And then after it goes through that, it goes through an activated charcoal system. And I'm talking not the little thing on the right. refrigerator right. or something that's 20 feet wide and has tons of activated charcoal in there, and you run it through that system. That's expensive. You got to add stuff to the water to take it out of the water, filter it out of the water to take the bacteria and and the substances out of the water. Long story short, the water coming out of that plant's about the purest water in the valley. Anywhere on the planet. But it cost $8 million to build that plant. And we built two of them. How, how, just educate me on this. How much water can one plant do? I mean, in uh, other words, I how, don't, how many people? I don't really know right now. <coughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of this uh, technology is new. It's so new. This yeah. one four day oxygen before data compounds is nationwide. It's not just Moran. Right. Anywhere that you have an Air Force base or at, at even an air base or a regular air base. Uh, a lot of this stuff came out of the compounds they used to clean the planes. You know, if you clean a jet and it gets an extra five miles per gallon of jet fuel or something like that, it saves millions of dollars right. over the year. So they, they and the same so with fi- fighter jets developed? and everything. This that's where developed? a lot of this came from. Yes, it was a compound made by Dow and 3M. Go they through. they at the time didn't know it was horrible. Like I said, they use it in Teflon and they use it in shampoo. That's why you shampoo your hair and it was a little greasy and yeah. all of a sudden it's dry and looks right. fluffy and everything else. Uh, these compounds did good things. Just on the tail end, they did bad things yeah. and that they, they were not aware of at the time. And we're cleaning that situation up. That is awesome. So, uh, you know, really the qualitative part of our, our uh, systems is really being upgraded. Uh, our water system in Marana is an enterprise fund. And basically what that means is you derive enough income from selling water to homeowners and businesses to run your operation, not make a profit. Now you may make more than you, you may make $10 for every nine you spend, mm-hmm. but you spend that extra buck right. to expand your plants or put in new lines or put in new treatment systems or hire more personnel to take care of the problems. Uh, we were not able to do the two $8 million plants in the enterprise system. We just paid for that out of general the fund general money, budget. and we borrowed the money from WIFA, the Water Infrastructure Financing Authority. Is that a federal? Uh, it, it's it's a federal type thing that comes through the state, but I mean it's federal federally, money federally for funded. water and wastewater facilities. And we've used WIFA for other programs too. But we still have to pay it back. Right. And over a 20-year period it's a million bucks a year or whatever well that's a lot of money but if you spread it over six thousand or seven or eight thousand water users you know it ends up being lesser than what you think but uh, our water system has always paid for itself we didn't make a profit we just made enough uh, enough money to pay the personnel buy vehicles buy pipe by treatments, whether it be chlorine or these new eight million dollar treatment systems, occasionally you got to go in and clean that charcoal right. up, or take the slow sand out and put clean stuff in. And, and how re- often? How often? And do that you know? I do not know. They're fairly new. I mean, yeah. those plants have only been online about six months. It took us almost two years to get them built. But like I said, it's a completely new concept nationally. 
on how to do it. So we were one of the first? Is so we were, we were one of the first, I think the first in Arizona to right? build these plants. But uh, uh, others have plants like this when the triglyceride type things or the, the uh, problems that Tucson was having on the south and west sides. They built some really high dollar plants to take those chemicals out of the water. And it wasn't a, Tucson didn't create the problem. It was oil from transformers and different things that were percolating into the ground. Well, now they still use a lot of those oils, but those oils are sent to, uh, by truck to treatment centers to where they filter the goods, you know, the bad product <laughs> out. That's and wild. not letting it trickle down in, in, you know, into the groundwater and stuff. So we're, we're what I'm getting out of this is especially our area. I'm not going to speak to right. other areas, but our area is really doing a bang up job on we're, water we're conservation doing a as a whole. Phenomenal job, uh, uh, Doctor Jing Lu, who is the head of our utility department. What an asset to our community. And I might add that our former head of our Marana Water, John Kamik, who had come from Tucson to Marana, worked for us for many years. Right. Then Tucson offered him a very lucrative deal. He's now the head of Tucson Water again. <laughs> Which well, is where we get our water from. You know, well, no, we uh, Tucson pumps about half the water, half potable the water. water, Marana, and Marana pumps the other half. And as we get larger, it's going to be more and more Marana and less and less right. Tucson because of the uh, the size of the community. But uh, we have some really sharp people in our water department, and uh, we are doing everything we can to make sure people get really quality water. You know, and then another thing I wanted to say about th this fear about you're running out of water, Dub Mountain and Continental Ranch both get Tucson water. And the reason is, when those communities started to develop, Marana was not large enough to put in the big wells and the big systems and everything. And those developers, uh, David Mill and Dub Mountain and uh, actually Robert Sarber uh, mm -hmm. and different ones in Continental Ranch, uh, Mr. Sarber's in trouble right now. Yeah, he moment. is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they contracted with Tucson. And uh, actually they contracted with Tucson before we annexed the properties. Is that right? So that's why Tucson serves the water. And like I said, I, I fight at the RTA and PAG with Tucson every meeting. But I'll pat them on the back for something they did well. And so, they did water well. So Tucson water is in Dub Mountain and Continental Ranch in yes. Marana. Yes. Which is what? Half the population? Half, half the population or a little more. But what is happening is all the new growth now is Miranda water. And part of the reasoning uh, with all of this is Tucson would provide water to anybody. At one time, they wanted to provide water to the entire county, no matter what city or town. Right. And that kind of fell through. So what Tucson did is says anybody that wants to build outside of the city of Tucson County, Marana, Oro Valley, Sarita. Even if we have water lines running right by the property, we will not serve it. And that's the way the rule is right yeah. now. And occasionally we can get Tucson water to serve part of our community, but it's through a contractual agreement. You serve the water. It's part of the water we're recharging in the recharge basin out in the valley. So you're actually taking our water to those people and then we will buy it wholesale or take it from the right. from the uh, main and then we will put in the systems in the communities uh, you know as far as meters and and all that kind of stuff so we've been able to work together some but uh we're we're doing all right here for water. And it doesn't mean that water is not something you're going to be careful with. Oh, it's absolutely. It's not a very yeah. valuable commodity. We can't live without water. Right, 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 right. But it's not the crisis that it's being made out to be. Boy, I was just picturing a flow chart of everything you just talked about. Water is very complicated. It's very complicated. Very complicated. And it takes 
people with long-term vision, skills, knowledge, and a, a, a group of people working for the common cause of conserving and recharging water. Right. Let me let me talk to you a little bit, even about the uh, political figures of our town council. Please. My parents, in 1953, I was six years old, built the first potable water company in Marin. Mm-hmm. I have worked in water delivery, life. water treatment. I put in meters. I've dug ditches to put in water lines. So my dad gave me a shovel and say, <laughs> get get working, boy. And, and if you've ever dug a hole in Arizona, you know that is not an easy task. But, I mean, it's kind of like I have that kind of water uh, experience. Yeah. John Officer just retired after 25 years yeah. working with CAP. Yeah. John Post is the chairman of CMID Water District. Right. And one of the largest farmers in Pima County. Right. And Herb Kai is also on that board and a farmer and has some mobile parks and stuff with potable water. You got four people on our council well, that have excess. dealt with water their entire life. Exactly. Not only quantity, but quality. Yeah, I was so going to say 100 years, but it's way more than, because if you've been in the water business, if you will, Almost since 1950, yeah, 1953, and, and I think Herb and you are roughly the Herb same age. Herb and I are about the same age. And John, he's been involved John, in that long. John and John are younger. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, if you put us in perspective, we have about 200 years yeah. of experience in the water business. That's wild. And we're doing creative things in Marana, working with CMID, Cortera Marana Irrigation District. And John Post is and, the— And John and Herber on that board. Okay. Uh, but what we're doing now is in new communities like Gladden Farms. The potable water to the housing is done through the town of Marana. The water for irrigation of parks, trees, uh, setbacks, and green spaces is coming from CMID. So what happens is the way we, we do things there, if CMID uses that water to water the trees and the parks and everything in, in uh, Glad Farms, we don't have to have water credits to pump that water. That's awesome. And we don't care who makes the money on no, the water no. or, or whatever. We just care we can get it. Right. And uh, so we, we're working with our neighbors at CMID. A wonderful organization. Doug, the the manager there, is a great guy, and he, uh, I'm two doors down my home from CMID, <laughs> CMID's main office. But we're working together as a community and as a team. We worked with Tucson. We work with CMID. We work with the town of Marana. We have so much water in northwestern Marana right now that we were building a project and, we, and we're kind of putting it on hold because of the economy and what's going on right now. Uh, we're in partnership with Metro Water and Oro Valley Water and Marana Water to pump water out of Northern Marana, fairly close to where our airport is there, uh -huh. between the airport uh -huh. and the river, where the water table is coming up, you know, a foot every year, not down, up. And we'll put in, I think it's going to be a 36-inch line there. Marana will put water in the line. We've allowed Oral Valley to buy a couple spaces out there to put wells in to put water. And Metro will put water in the line. We're going to take that water, working as a partner with our right. other two entities, we're going to pump it up the mountain. We're going to pump it up and serve uh, Cascada, which is across the road from uh -huh. uh, our mall there on, right. on uh, Tangerine. And the thing is, again, it's working together right. collectively. You go to a place where the water table is going up and not down, and you pump the water out of there, and you pump it up to places that don't have water. That, that needs it. Higher, higher elevation. And you know— and then right. it goes back into the wastewater system, runs through the Ida Road plant, the gets cleaned up to drinking water quality, <laughs> put back in the river and recharged in the basin. You know, I couldn't help but think as you were talking about that and, and the 
coming together as a community and everybody working together. Maybe water is where we start bringing people back together. Because wouldn't it be great if we could all work as we, as you guys and, and ladies and gentlemen have worked in the water conservation and the water, you know, uh, area of our community, if we could all start working together like we do in that, I mean, I can see water kind of being the unifying force. It's something that everybody needs. Whiskey's for drinking. Water's for fighting. Yeah. Is this, this statement. Uh, unfortunately... I, I'm naming things to where Marana has been able to work with partners right. and we have been able to. And uh, I, I'm not necessarily a supporter of what Tucson is doing with their new water. You know, we won't serve communities in this and, right. and, and stuff. But I will give them credit for a great water portfolio. Right. You know, so uh, water is an issue. It's a big issue. But if you live here, you're never going to lose your water at your home. You're just not going to lose it. It's not going to happen. You know, you can obviously tell this this gentleman knows what he's talking about, and you're passionate about it. And if you've been dealing with My it, my parents started your a water whole company life. in 1953. I was six years old. My dad would put in water mains for the first few houses which he converted a, 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 a irrigation well into a water system. But uh, I would drag, a lot of it was transite pipe in the early days, you know, before they right. got to the uh, plastics or even steel right. or whatever, is the little six-year-old kid would I can drag, the t <laughs> drag the tin, I couldn't pick it up, right. but I could you drag, could drag it, it over to give to my daddy who was in the ditch yeah, so he could put the pipe together. Yeah. And I said, I I got broken in early. Yeah. By the time I was 12 or my brother was 10 in the Honey Heights neighborhood, which was really one of the f really first neighborhoods yeah. in Moran, uh, was developed. And somebody would come in and buy a lot. And he'd say, Mr. Betancourt bought a lot down there off of Swanson. And I staked it out where the ditch needs to be. Here's your shovel. For, from the main to... Mr. Betancourt's property line. Here's two number two shovels. Take your brother, and you guys go down there and dig me a ditch eight inches wide and 20 inches deep. Yeah. And my brother, you know, and it didn't kill me either. No. I, I laugh about yeah. that. I didn't yeah. like it then. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm but sure didn't. I laugh about that so much now is and my brother and I, would. it was fairly sandy soil there. We'd go down and dig the ditch, and every time you dug down, it caved in yeah, a little and dig yeah. down. And we'd dig the 20-inch ditch to Mr. Betancourt's line, and then we'd go with my dad, who had other jobs. He worked as a de sheriff deputy. He worked as a firefighter. He worked at different things. But when it's time off, go get me a stick of pipe, son. You drag the pipe it. out, whether it was three quarter galvanized or plastic as as things modernized and stuff like that. Go get me a coupling, son. I was his uh, laborer. Yeah, yeah, La and 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 very little expense involved. You know? Hey, you know, I am sure. I'm going to throw this out there that if anybody has any questions or comments or wants follow up information regarding water. You'd be glad to. Address. I will speak to any group at any time about any subject. Period. I I'm, I I consider myself a mayor of the of the people. Yeah. Not a mayor in charge of the people. I'm yeah. one of the yeah. people. And if you want to talk about water, you want me to come to your HOA or your church. I speak at a lot of churches and stuff on things going on in the community. And uh, if you want me to come and speak to your church or you want me to come and speak to your HOA, I will tell people that I have macular so I don't drive anymore. Everything else works fine, even this. I'll, I'll drive you, Ed. But if you want me to come and speak to your HOA, you may have to come pick me up. But I would be happy to speak to people. Yeah. And, you know, ignorance is bliss. And a lot of times people are told by a neighbor we're running out of water, and they're going to cut off the water to your house. And it scares you because that's your home. Yeah. 
where you have your children, where you live. I could prove to you through facts and talking to you that that is not true. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I want to do that is what I'm trying to do with this podcast thing that we're doing with you. And I thank you very much, Clint, it's for our allowing pleasure. me to do it's this pleasure. is get information out to the people. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah you, that's a whole purpose. And you this. may not like what I say. I said this the last time. But I'll tell you what we're doing and why. Yeah. And how. And how. You know, we will be back with Ed again next week. We're going to get back more into the history of Marana. But Ed felt like, and I concurred with him completely, that water is such a major, uh, it's so important, and it's such a major concern now with the news and how everybody's discussing it. I had a neighbor just a few couple of weeks ago. I live in Oro Valley. But we're still affected by right. all of this. Yeah, well, absolutely. And kind of just hollered at me across the driveway, hey, and mentioned water. And was kind of losing it a little bit. I'm like, hang on. Quit listening. Quit listening to the naysayers because they're wrong. We have plenty of water. And I, over the last six months, no, I can tell you this. I don't, I don't know what you know about it. Never will. But. I know more about water than I ever dreamed that I would know <laughs> in following you guys around over the last six months and how it all works. It's intriguing how it all really works. And when you start talking about chemicals in and charcoal and filtering out, that's to me, that's uh, it blows my mind a little bit that we have the resources and the knowledge to be able to do that. Right. Well, and, and to put it in perspective, I mean, mentioned four council members that have 200 years of yeah. experience in water. Our families live here. Exactly. My brother and sister live here. Exactly. Uh, my cousins and their children and grandchildren live here. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize the point that where they would not have water to live in this right. community. Right, right, right. I live here. Right. You, you know, uh, just... Don't believe all you hear. And like I said, a lot of it's based on half-truths. Yes, Lake Mead is going down. No, you are not running out of right. water. And, uh, you know, I'd be happy to talk to anybody. Yeah, I you know, know you will. Uh, call my office and ask for me to come and speak to your group. Or I'll even speak to individuals. Uh, the phone number on my card is my personal cell phone number. It, it really is. It, it, and, and it also has my office number. I would prefer you call my office, you know, and uh, 382-1908. Say that again. 382-1908. There you go. And talk to Linda, who does my calendar. Great lady. Say, hey, heard the mayor on a podcast on water, and I wanted to ask him some questions, or I'm interested in him coming to speak to my church or synagogue or my my club or whatever, yeah, HOA group. Right. I'd like to talk to the mayor. She generally doesn't give out my number, which I don't care if she does or not, but she'll call me and say, Mrs. Smith called, and I will call Mrs. Smith back as soon as I possibly can and work out the the arrangement. So we're not trying to hide anything from anybody. You know, uh, one of the things that is in my beliefs is don't tell a lie the first time. Yeah, exactly. Because then you <laughs> try to remember the second time yeah. to tell the same yeah. lie. Yeah. Tell people the truth, even if you think they're not going to like it, because your story's going to be You don't have to same. remember anything. Your story's <laughs> going to be the same the next time out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, Ed, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and I just, I'm glad you chose this topic today because as important as it is, let's not let it cloud uh, our, our vision of the future because you and the people that have been in uh, running this program, the Johns and, right. and the uh, and Johns and Herbs of the world have done a remarkable job. Let's keep doing it and building on it, but let's start focusing some of our attention and effort in things that, that maybe do need a little more fixing and tweaking than right. our water supply. Thanks again for coming on. Looking forward to seeing you back here next week. We're going to talk about more of Marana and more of the Honies and, 
all the fun stuff of living in Pima County. I'd rather talk about my family, which is everybody that lives or works in the town there of Moran, than about me. So Yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're going to talk about a whole bunch about Moran, so stick around. Thanks, Ed. We appreciate it very Thank much. Thank you very much.